Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. I'm here in Akihabara to show you all the best places to buy your retro games. I've found so many great shops, so let's go and have a look. So the first shop we're going to look at here is called Surugaya. There's several different Surugayas and not all of them sell games. So in this video I'll just be showing the ones that sell retro games. This one is just outside of the train station. And there's even some games in boxes outside the front which is really cool. To get to the main gaming section in this store you have to go down the stairs here. And as you can see the first time I went down there it was incredibly busy. So I managed to go back a few days later and have a look. It's a very small store, it's very very cramped inside. But as you can see it's got a fantastic selection of games and hopefully from this footage you'll be able to pick out a few cool items that I saw while I was down there. There's a whole wall of PS1 games here which is really cool to see. Of course they've got all the Japanese facing towards the front so it's kind of difficult to pick out what the games are. And there's a few more rare games at the top there. Let me know if you spot anything interesting. I've tried to slow this footage down enough so that it's clear but unfortunately it's still a little bit blurry so I apologise for that but hopefully you can see some cool things and it gives you a good idea of what the shops are like. It was really cramped down here so unfortunately I didn't get to go all the way around the shop to get footage and there were a few people there and it was literally so cramped that you couldn't even get past anyone. And I didn't actually buy anything from this store either, I think this is the only store where I didn't actually buy any games. Mostly just because the queue was too long. And you can kind of see down this side they had some Famicom games and some Super Famicom games there in the cabinet. I couldn't really get down there to have a good look. Now to the second store here, if you come out of there and go along this road you'll eventually get to something that's called Book Off, which is kind of difficult to see. It's actually around the corner here inside this building. And I stumbled upon this one completely by accident, but I was really, really excited when I got in there. They had some amazing stuff. First of all, we're taking a look at these cabinets here. They had some of the rarer games. I saw Cotton there on the Sega Saturn. There was loads of Saturn, GameCube, basically every system you can think of. They also had loads of games for the PSP, that I'm showing you right now and loads for the Vita as well and a whole section there for the Nintendo Wii and on the other side there we've got PS3 games so literally every system that you can think of this shop had loads of games for it and the most exciting thing for me was these boxes here at the side they were just jam-packed full of Super Famicom there was a box there full of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games and then there's just hundreds of Famicom games just laid out, ready to have a route through. I really, really did enjoy my time here. I spent ages looking through all these boxes. But the most exciting thing wasn't that, it was actually these here. These are Gachapon machines that actually had Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS and PlayStation Vita games inside. So for between 200 and 400 yen, you could put the money in there and get a random game. Don't know. A Vita game? Cool. Just 400 yen. Mm -hmm. And, I got it. You can see Now we're going across the street to the other side of the train station and one incredibly huge shop called Yodabashi Camera. Most of this is just technology and stuff but up on the seventh floor there's a section dedicated to retro games. These are actually the new homebrew games that have been put out recently by Columbus Circle. You saw there there was Battle Kid and there's Shubibin Man Zero I think it's called which was originally a Satellaview game and they've actually finally put it on cartridge a few years ago so it's really cool to see all of these homebrew games being sold as new in a place like this. Most of Yodabashi is new games, they've got a fantastic range of Switch and PS4 titles up there. I actually picked up a HDMI splitter which looks like a Mega Drive Model 1 and that's just really cool. And as you can see they have loads of cool merch here as well, there was loads of Kirby stuff and some Final Fantasy and Animal Crossing things too. And on the topic of Animal Crossing, my girlfriend was super lucky and she managed to get the brand new Animal Crossing Switch edition from Yodabashi on launch day. Hello! 
Now we're back on the main street of Akihabara and this next shop here is called Radio Kaikan. It's one of the original shops from Akihabara, it's been here almost as long as the place itself has been known as a technology centre. It doesn't actually sell any games but I just wanted to bring it up because if there's anything you're looking for of a gaming character, retro or modern, you're pretty much guaranteed to find it here. This place just has everything, figures, anime, gaming that you could possibly want. Just have a look at some of these amazing figures that I saw in the Good Smile shop in there. And something else that really excited me, I found this Steins Gate vending machine. And of course I just had to buy a drink. Now back outside on the other side of the street is the slightly misleadingly named Gamers. Considering it's called Gamers, this shop really doesn't have a lot of games. Most of it is DVDs and manga books. But there was this one really cool section on the fourth floor here that's dedicated entirely to the Toho series. This is one of the few places in Akihabara where you can actually buy the original Toho games on the PC and I'm a huge fan of that series so I had to pick a few of them up when I saw them here. I think I got the latest one which is number 17 and 12.5 and one other one as well. I'll show you at the end of this section. But yeah, I just thought that was really cool to see. And as well as that, on this wall here, they have lots and lots of video game soundtracks. There was actually quite a few different shops with game soundtracks, but this one had a great selection. You can see there, there's the Namco Sound Museum. I can see the Tales of Biseria soundtrack down there as well. And they also had the new one from Link's Awakening on the Switch. So here's the Toho games that I picked up. They were Toho 17, number 12.5 and number 11. Now, just round the corner from there, there's a tiny little shop hidden away called Geo Mobile. If you just go in there and look on the second floor, you're going to be disappointed. So go on up to the third floor and you'll be greeted with an entire room full of Nintendo and PlayStation games. They didn't have too much to choose from, but it was a really cool little shop and I don't think many people know about this one. As you can see there, they had some PS3 games on the side and they've got some Switch games there and some 3DS and original DS games for sale. And on the other side of this, they did have some retro games as well, mostly PlayStation 1, I believe. And on the back wall there, they've actually got some really cool special edition games on the PS2. Most of them seem to be visual novels, though. I did have a look down there at the bottom of that shelf. There's quite a lot of cool games there, so if you're into your visual novels on PlayStation, this is the place to come. And let me know if you spot anything else interesting on the shelves. Like I said, most of the stuff has the Japanese facing forward, so it's kind of hard for me to talk about what I'm actually seeing here without having to go through and pull all the games out individually, which is what I did after I stopped filming. But yeah, as you can see, hundreds of PS2 games here. Really cool shop, and it's quite hidden away. Like a lot of stuff in Akihabara. And there's some of the original DS games on this side as well. There's so many to look through there. I could literally spend all day just looking through this one shelf alone. Just look at that, that's crazy. Now from Geo, if you go across the road and follow the train track here down the side, you'll eventually get to a KFC, and if you look just opposite that, you'll see a shop called Trader 2. There's actually three different traders in Akihabara. This one is mostly for more adult-style PC games, which are on the third floor. But if you have a look on the floor when you walk in, you'll see a few games here. There was some Tyco Drum Master there on the shelf and there's some PS3 and Xbox 360 games. Nothing really retro in this store. The best store is Trader 1, which I'll get to later on in this video. But you can see this is a good place to come if you want to have a look at some PlayStation Vita games. I can see the uh, Clanad game there, and the Project Diva games on the, on the Vita as well, so that's really cool to see. And one really cool thing that I did buy from this shop the first time I went to Japan was my special edition Game Boy Micro, the Famicom version. I was super excited to find that. But yeah, there wasn't really much to show in this shop. But just before we get on to this next shop, there's an arcade that I found that is just amazing, so I just had to show you guys this. I wasn't expecting to see all these original arcade cabinets, so imagine my surprise when we went through an arcade and the first two floors were just the regular claw machines, but then up on the third floor we found all of these really amazing, immaculate condition retro arcade cabinets. It was just so cool to be able to play things like the original Space Harrier, Afterburner, they even had things like Rad Mobile and ABC Cop which I've never even seen in person before, and the original Monaco GP as well by Sega. 
it was just so cool to be able to actually play all of these. And there's Super Punch Out as well, that was another one I was really excited to see. So yeah, definitely recommend checking this arcade out if you're ever in Akihabara. And with that, it's time to move on to the next shop. So from Trader 2, if you turn around and head straight down this street here, past the Sega Arcade, you'll get to, by far the most famous shop in Akihabara, called Super Potato. Probably the most expensive gaming shop, but also definitely the most fun to have a look around in. As you can see there, as soon as you enter you're greeted by this giant Fox McLeod, and then just endless walls of games. This place is just as much of a museum as it is a game shop. It's truly incredible to walk around it, and to just take in all the sights and sounds. As you can see there, there was a whole wall of PC Engine games, which I'll be coming back to a bit later on and a whole wall of Dreamcast games as well. And here's some Super Famicom games, you can see the Mega Man X series there. Everything is in immaculate condition. Of course it's expensive, but you do get what you paid for, because everything that I've bought from this shop has been really good condition, and I did buy quite a lot, even though I know I could probably get it cheaper somewhere else. It's just so easy to be sucked in by the atmosphere, and I know that's how they get a lot of the tourists, and I fell for their trap, but to be honest I didn't really mind, just because having places like this that exist, it just blows my mind, it really does, so I just have to support them. I know not everyone agrees with that, and there's probably going to be lots of people in the comments telling me, oh you shouldn't go to Akihabara, you should get a train for an hour or two and go to Hard Off instead, but... You know, Akihabara is something special and I really, really enjoy looking around there and buying the games. And like I said, I don't really mind if it costs me a little bit more just for the experience. And they've also got a lot of rarer games. You can even see down the bottom there, there was some 3DO games and some Neo Geo CD. They're not the kind of games that you see that often, so I managed to get some footage from that. And there's also some Sega Mark III games there and some Sega Mega Drive games. The Mega Drive wasn't really that popular in Japan, so it's always cool to see Mega Drive games. There's Raiden Trad there, and Tiger, uh, Thunder Force 3 and 4, loads of great games. Gainug, that's a brilliant game. I actually did a video on that one many, many years ago. And on this side here, there's a few Sega Saturn games. And Super Potato is actually split across three floors. On this first floor that we're looking at now, this is the really retro stuff, like Famicom, Super Famicom, Sega Mark III and Sega Mega Drive, that sort of thing, and PC Engine. And then if you go up to the second floor, that's where you'll find a few more slightly modern things like PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, uh, GameCube, Xbox, that sort of thing. And then on the third floor, which I'll show you at the end of this tour, they have loads of arcade machines and a little cafe slash bar area as well, which is really cool. And here's some more uh, Super Famicom games, Rockman 7 there. As you can see, everything is quite expensive, but let me know if you spot anything you really like. I did pick up quite a few Famicom games, and I'll definitely be showing them in a Famicom Pickups episode, which will be coming soon. So make sure you subscribe so you can see that when it goes live. I've picked up some really, really exciting stuff. There's some Dragon Ball games there. I've never actually played any of the Dragon Ball games, not any of the retro ones anyway. And here's a glass cabinet full of Game & Watches. Another system that I don't really collect for, but I would really like to. And here's me inspecting the Shubibin Man games on the PC Engine. If you saw my PC Engine pickups video, then you'll know that I did actually buy all of the games in that series. I know I just put that one back on the shelf, but I did go back later on and pick it up. I couldn't resist, even though it was slightly expensive. There's also Gunhead there, that's one of my favourite shooting games of all time. And now we're going to take a look at some of the Dreamcast games. Let me know if you see anything interesting. There's Biohazard 2 there. Uh, looks like a special edition. It looks like it had an extra game. Looks like it had an extra disc in there. And there was my girlfriend bringing it over to me to show me. But I didn't really pay it much attention. I was much more interested in the PC Engine games, unfortunately. But looking back on it now, that would be quite interesting. It was only 1,900 yen as well. There she goes, putting it back on the shelf. <laughs> or getting lost on the way back to the shelf. I don't know what she's doing with it. 
There's me on the floor having a look at some games. And here's a few games that they had on display. There's Dragon's Dragon Spirit. Yep, Dragon Spirit there. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. It's something in Japanese. If you know what that game was, let me know. And here's another look at some of the PC Engine games there. There's Twin B, fantastic port of Twin B on the PC Engine, and R Type. I actually picked up R Type Complete. I didn't go for the individual ones there. And this is the second floor that I was talking about. So this one's got loads of PS1 games. You can see the Pop and Music series there. The really cool Japanese box for the original Rayman, uh, Mega Man or Rockman 8. Uh, what else did I see there? Not sure. Clock Tower, that's quite an expensive game. Planet Laika, that's one that I actually picked up on eBay just before I came out to Japan as part of the Quintet series. And this game I'm holding here, I haven't done my PS1 pickups video yet, but this was one I was really excited to find. I was actually looking for one of the simple 1500 series games in particular, which I'll show on my phone right here when this loads. I did actually um, make a big list of games that I was looking for in Japan. So this is me trying to load that list up here. You can see I got uh, screenshots for all the games I was looking for. So there was this one called The Zero Yon, which unfortunately I didn't find anywhere in Akihabara. I even took my phone to show the people behind the counter and they couldn't find it either. So I gave up on that, but I did order it when I got back home. So that one's actually in the post on the way here now. But I was actually quite surprised to find out that there's loads of games in that simple 1500 series collection on the PS1. I had no idea there were so many, I thought there was only the one that I knew about and maybe two or three others, but there's like over a hundred of them as far as I know. And here's a look at some of the more expensive games in the glass cabinet at the back. You can see all of the Rockman games there on the Game Boy. Rockman World, there was uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, can't remember what the uh, subtitle is for that one. And there's the Famicom Game Boy Micro that I talked about earlier, the one that I picked up in that trader store. And there's some of the really cool um, special edition Game Boy Colors and Game Boy Light. There was the Astro Boy Game Boy Light there. I've actually got that one thanks to my friend Asobi Tech. He did a really good deal for me with, uh, last year at the London Gaming Market. And at the back up here on the second floor, you've got loads of game uh, strategy guides. So that's always really cool to see, even if I can't read them, they're still really cool to look at. And there's me and Dean looking around, and I've got a bag full of games already by the looks of it. And there's some PS2 games here, the Final Fantasy games, and Dragon Quest. I think that one there is a spin-off of Dragon Quest 4, let me know if I'm right about that. And there's some more weird Crash Bandicoot Japanese covers. I always think it's really interesting when Japan has completely different box art to the rest of the world. It's uh, They really tried to make everything super cute. And here's a quick look at some of the arcade machines on the top floor as well. Now if you go back up the street a little bit and up this side street here and turn left at the top you're back onto the main Akihabara road and there's a store just there next to the Sega building called Mulan. There's quite a few of these shops dotted around Akihabara but this is the one that I found with the most retro games inside. Like the Surigaya shop I showed earlier this one's extremely cramped so only go in here if it's kind of quiet but as you can see they have a good selection of Super Famicom games and they also have a lot of the homebrew games that you could get in Yodabashi as well. I know a lot of people pass this shop up because from outside it just looks like it sells anime figures but if you do go in go all the way to the back and then you'll find all the games and there's also some modern games as well there's some PS4 there's PS3 down there they've even got some Wii U games so it's not the biggest selection but it's definitely something worth checking out. And there's a look at some of the DS and 3DS games on the top shelf there, and some PS4 games too. But as you can see, as I'm uh, moving the camera around here, the shop is extremely uh, cramped. The space between the shelves is just about enough for one person to walk through. So if there's anyone else in the way, you're pretty much not going to be able to see anything. Still kind of interesting to check out. I hope you enjoyed this footage that I managed to get. Now just round the corner from this shop is a huge building called Akiba Zone. 
And in this shop you want to go up to the third floor, because that's where all the retro games are. There's not too many to choose from, they're just against the back wall here, but the games that were there were really good. I managed to pick up Dodon Patchy on the Sega Saturn for a really good price. And as you can see here, there's a really nice display cabinet full of really rare and interesting games. And it also looks like a good place to come if you want some consoles as well. Some Game Boy, DS, anything handheld really. But here's a look in the cabinet here. I see Gimmick there on the Famicom, as well as a lot of the Rockman games. And Athena up there as well, one of SNK's more famous games. And there were some Game Boy games there on that display. Loads to look at here and there's loads of Famicom and some N64 games there as well. The N64 is one of the only systems that I can't actually play the Japanese games on at the moment, so I would love to get a Japanese N64 at some point. I've slowed the footage down for these shelves just a little bit so you can have a look at some of the games in a little bit more detail. Let me know if you spot anything interesting. You can see Mario 3 there on the Famicom. And then along the bottom here was some of the more modern games. There were some Switch, PS4 titles, Pretty much every system you could think of, and in this box at the end and next to it there's some special edition PS2 games there, some visual novels. So overall, really cool shop. So outside of Akiba Zone, if you come down the street here, you'll get to by far my favourite shop to actually shop in. This one is called Mandarake, and in here you'll want to go up to the 6th floor and you'll be greeted by a wall of immaculate condition Super Famicom games. It seriously is like stepping into heaven here once you step out of the elevator. Absolutely incredible shop. Just look at the amount of copies of Seekon Densetsu 3 they have there. And my girlfriend was holding up one of the Bomberman games there as well. I picked up loads of stuff from this shop and I'm going to be showing a lot of it in my Super Famicom pickups episode, which will be out next week. And having a look here in this cabinet, you can see some of the rarer games that they've got on sale. Unfortunately, they don't really like you recording the cabinets in here, so I didn't manage to get that much footage. So, enjoy what I could sneakily manage to get here. You can see there was Cotton on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. That's a really rare and interesting game to find. And the most exciting thing for me was up here. If you can see that there, the 64DD and all the games that came with it for 150,000. And I know that's crazy money, but I was tempted to get it. But I'm kind of glad that I didn't, because I wouldn't have had much more spending money for the rest of the holiday. And here's another one of their crazy expensive glass cabinets. There's some amazing games in here. You can see Hagane there on the Super Famicom, and the um, Kirby Star Stacker Super Famicom Edition. That's the only Kirby game that I don't have for my Kirby collection, but unfortunately it's really expensive. And then between the glass cabinets and the entrance you also had a few different rows of shelves. This one had mostly Dreamcast and PC Engine games and then this one here is full of Sega Saturn games. I didn't manage to get footage of it but there was also a whole load of Game Boy, Famicom and PlayStation 1 games as well. Really is an incredible shop, I would definitely recommend you go and visit if you're ever in Akihabara. There's, they've literally got everything. Apart from that game that I was looking for that I had on my phone earlier, I asked them about that and they couldn't find it, unfortunately. And now we're out of Mandarake, the next shop we're going to is down here, and it's only a short walk, this one is Hard Off. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people would probably say, why don't you go and visit a Hard Off? Well, a lot of people don't actually know Akihabara itself does actually have one. Of course, it's quite inflated prices compared to some of the Hard Offs that are further away, and it doesn't have that much of a great selection, but if you go up to the second floor, you'll find a few retro games and goodies. I actually managed to pick up a Tetris game I've been looking for in the Xbox 360, and that was actually really cheap. You can see there's some more interesting games here as well. There were some of the Rockman EXE games, the Mega Man Battle Network games. And they had a few random bits and pieces in the boxes here, and there was controllers and wires everywhere. So, pretty cool shop. Now, the next shop is called Softmap. There's quite a few different softmaps in here, and these ones don't really have that much in the way of retro, but they definitely have an amazing selection of modern games. This one here, I think, is the main softmap store in Akihabara. And they pretty much had everything you could possibly want on a modern system. And loads of accessories and things as well. You can see I was walking past all of the different Switch accessories there. There was hundreds of things to choose from. 
And here's the actual Switch games themselves. As you can see, there's a great selection there, and they also had some more on the other side as well. So pretty much any new game that you're looking for, you could easily pick it up in Softmap. But as well as new games, they also went back as far as the original DS, and there were some PS3 games there as well. I think I spotted Tales of Vesperia there on the PS3. And around the corner, uh, they also had some PC games. And there's some PSP games there as well, and there's some big box uh, visual novels. There was the Angel Beats visual novel, I would love to play that one. Being a huge fan of Clanad, I just would love to play the other games that Key made. Unfortunately, I don't think it's been translated though. And then the next shop we're going to, outside Softmap, if you carry on just down the street, you'll get to Trader One, which is definitely the best of the three. If you go up to the second floor, this is Retro Gamer's Heaven, just like Mandarake. There's so much cool stuff here. As you can see, as soon as you go in, you're greeted by a glass cabinet full of some rarer games. And there's that Kirby game that I wanted again, as well as some other ones. There's the Japanese version of Plock there. i never actually seen the Japanese uh, box art for that before. That's one of my favourite games on the SNES, so that was pretty cool to see. And they also have a few more modern games there, but I'm not really too interested in the modern stuff. Here's the stuff I'm interested in. So, uh, on this shelf here, you can see a lot of PC Engine games. I did pick up a few games for the PC Engine, if you haven't seen it already you can go back and have a look at my PC Engine pickups video and you can see which ones I picked up from this trader shop here. Sorry about the kind of awkward camera angle, I was trying to use my Osmo Pocket so I could do this a bit stealthily but I seem to have slightly cut off the box art there so enjoy me having a flick through and that game is called Magical I think, that one's a uh, an RPG for the PC Engine. I don't know if it's got a fan translation or not, let me know if you know if it has because it looks pretty cool. And as you can see they had a great selection there but they've also got loads more PC Engine games at the back. And there's some of their Famicom selection. I didn't spend too long looking through all the Famicom games. That's kind of a system that I don't know too much about so if you guys can recommend any games for the uh, Famicom, especially ones that never came out on the NES, I would really be interested in that. So maybe next time I'm in Japan I can try and pick up some more Famicom games. That would be really cool. And on this side here they had some boxed Famicom games. And I picked this one up. This is one that I didn't get but I was kind of tempted to. It's another one It's another one of those Columbus Circle uh, homebrew re-releases. or Not really re-releases but one of the homebrew releases from Columbus Circle. And this one is a really well-regarded vertical scrolling shooter on the Famicom called Crisis Force, I think. And then on the wall at the back here we've got loads of uh, systems for sale. They had some really interesting stuff there. Some of it looks in good condition and some of it looks really old, like that really yellow Dreamcast that I just saw there. And here's a look at the other side of the PC Engine shelf. That's uh, Salamander, I think part of the Gradius series, possibly. I know that's a really confusing series. And what else do we have there? Shinobi. The PC Engine version is based on the arcade game as far as I know. So that's quite interesting. I also see the really good uh, port of Street Fighter 2 there. I'm not sure what that game is that I just picked up. If anyone knows, let me know. And I can see Ease 4 down there at the bottom. Of course, that's a great game. And there's the game that I bought actually, Winds of Thunder. I think I keep hold of this for the rest of the video, but yeah, I did go back and get this one and I did not regret it at all, even though it was quite expensive, but it's a fantastic game, it really is. Yeah, I'm keeping hold of that one. And there's also Popful Mail down there as well. I didn't get that one, but I did actually pick up the Super Famicom version from Super Potato later on uh, in the week. And uh, what am I looking at there? Ray's Amber 2, that's another game that I was looking at. I think I was trying to toss up between do I get Winds of Thunder or do I get Ray's Amber 2? But I went for Winds of Thunder in the end. Although I would like to go back and get that one as well. And there's some Switch games there and even some uh, imported games. Imported into Japan, so these are all English games here which is quite unusual. Apparently many years ago there used to be an actual import store in Akihabara where you could buy American and European games, but I don't think they did very well and they've closed down now, but I remember reading about that at one point. And hopefully you're all enjoying the video, I know this is quite long, and I think we're about halfway through now, so if you're still watching, let me know in the comments, and let me know some of your favourite things that you've spotted so far, 
and I really hope you're enjoying it. There's so much more to come. There's some amazing shops that I haven't even got around to looking at yet. But looking here, I think I saw ActRaiser on the top of the shelf there. One of my favourite games for the SNES, uh, made by Quintet. As I'm sure you'll know if you've been watching my channel for a while, I'm a huge Quintet fan. And on this side I can see some Final Fantasy there. I think I saw one of the Satellaview cards. I was kind of tempted to pick that up so I could get someone to put the Kirby Satellaview games that have got uh, released recently onto it. I think that would be really cool to be able to play them on the original system. There's some of the Rockman games there, there's Seek and Densetsu. There's Hagane, cart only, 7,000 yen. And Demon's Blazon as well, which is of course Demon Crest outside of Japan. And Wrecking Crew 98, I really kind of regret not picking that one up because that's not a game you see very often. And it's one of the rare instances of a game where Mario has a cameo that isn't, that is kind of uncommon. And there's a look at some of the N64 games. The N64 wasn't super popular in Japan, so it's always kind of interesting to have a look, but I don't really think there's that many uh, Japanese N64 games that are worth getting, unfortunately. And here's some of the GameCube games. I love the boxes that GameCube games came in in Japan. I just think they're really cool. And that one there was Gift Pier. I did get that game, but not from Trader. I actually got that one from the Book Off store that I showed you at the start of this episode. I haven't played it yet, but it looks really interesting. It's basically like an Animal Crossing style RPG, but it has Nintendo character cameos. And at the back here, we're having a look at some Sega Saturn games. There were some really, really good and quite rare Sega Saturn games here. There's Batsu Gun, that was another one that was on my list. And Tiger Black as well. And what else have we got here? It's kind of hard to see because of the glare on the boxes. That was Elevator Action Returns, I think. I hear that one's really good. I've never actually played it, though. But yeah, quite expensive. But I don't know whether it's worth the money or not. Let me know if you know anything about Elevator Action Returns. And what's down there? I can't quite make that out. I think they were Neo Geo Pocket games, possibly. And then on this shelf here, we have PS1 titles. And up there, the one that I just touched there, that was Umihara Kawase on the PS1. And I kind of regret not picking that up either because the Umihara series is really interesting as a whole. I would love to do a video on it at some point actually. And down this side of the room is all PS2 games as far as I recall. There was Gunbird there on the PS2. I can see Bomberman. I'm not sure which Bomberman that is. Uh, God Hand. I hear that's a good game. I haven't actually played that one. I don't really know too much about the PS2, especially the Japanese PS2 games. There's me looking at Gunbird, that's another one I kind of wish I'd got. There's also just spotted Saivaria Collection there. I managed to get that one on the Dreamcast. can't remember what shop I got it from though. And there's some special edition PS2 games as well. Seems like they really love their special edition PS2 games in Japan. Unfortunately though, a lot of them are um, visual novels, so they're kind of inaccessible. Especially as you can't really patch a PS2 game and play it on the original system, as far as I know. And then down this bit here, we've got some GBA games. I think I saw Astro Boy there on the GBA. That's a fantastic game by Treasure. One of my favourite developers. And there's some loose Game Boy Advance games up there as well. There was only one GBA game that I was looking for. And I actually managed to find it in Super Potato in Ikebukuro. Um, I gave my phone to the person behind the till and they actually went to go and get it for me. So I'll be doing a handheld pickups episode at some point in the future where I show off all of the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance and DS games and that sort of thing. So subscribe so you don't miss that because I did pick up some really cool stuff from there. And here's some Game Gear games. Game Gear is a system that I'm thinking about starting to collect for because while I was in Japan Another thing that I got was the Game Gear adapter for the Retro Freak, which lets you play the Game Gear games on the TV, which is really, really cool. And there's pop and music for the Game Boy. I always find it really interesting when I find out that the Game Boy has rhythm games. I actually bought the DDR game for the Game Boy, which I think is really, really weird. I remember back in the day when that game was first being released, and someone had managed to hack it, I think, to actually put a dance mat into the cartridge so you can actually hold your Game Boy while you're actually dancing on the dance mat which just sounds insane. So I don't know if that was actually real or if that's just something that the magazines made up 
but I just remember at the time thinking it looked really crazy and like how would that even be possible. So there was a quick look, well not really a quick look, there was a really long look inside Trader 1 and now we're going to have a quick look inside Trader 3. This one's on the other side of the street and this one is strictly for modern games. I think they kind of split it up, so Trader 1 is all the retro games, Trader 2 is all the... No, Trader 3 is all the modern games, and then Trader 2 didn't really seem to have that much of a theme, I think it's just a bit of a mix of both, but focused a bit more on the modern side. This one also had a load of DS games as well, but apart from that, not as good as Trader 1, so I definitely recommend going to that one. But if you're after some Wii games, or PS4 or 3, this is... You can't really go wrong with this shop, although I don't really find that as interesting as all the retro stuff. Mostly because you can pretty much buy those games anywhere. But yeah, quick look at the Switch games in case anyone's interested, and some of the PS4 titles as well. And now we're back on the other side of the road, and now we're going to have a look in Retro Game Camp. There's actually two different Retro Game Camps, there's this one here, and then there's another one which is underground called the Retro Game Camp Dungeon. This first one here is really cool, they've got a nice display on the outside there and as soon as you walk in you can just see loads of cartridges lying in the walls. Unfortunately, like a lot of the other shops in Akihabara, it is very cramped so unfortunately I couldn't get all the way around as you can see people kept walking through. Apparently this one's a bit of a tourist trap as well with kind of high prices compared to some of the other stores, so just bear that in mind if you're having a look round in here, but it's definitely worth taking a look. I remember when I came here about four years ago, I think in 2016, I picked up Quinty on the Famicom, which was the f one of the first games that Game Freak ever made, so that was really interesting to find. As you can see, they do have a fantastic selection, and I also picked up the um, the portable Super Famicom when I was here last time as well. Or when I was there the first time actually. And as you can see at the back there, behind these, they've actually got labels on the side of the cartridges. Which is really good because it means you don't have to flick through them all. And there's some N64 games there. And these are the labels that I was on about. So, Of course they're all in Japanese but I do appreciate the effort that they went through to actually label them all so you don't have to try and flick through them. And then of course, just like every other shop, here's their cabinet full of rare and expensive games. So let me know if you see anything interesting in there. Um, I can't remember what the name of that one was there, Val Valken, something like that, but I love the box art for that one. I also noticed Actraiser 2 there as a loose cartridge and some interesting looking Game Boy games there as well. Every time I watch these videos back to record voiceover, I wish I'd been a bit slower, so maybe when I go back to Japan in another few years' time, I'll really try and slow down so you can see it all properly. And then here's the other retro game camp that I was on about. This one, you go down the stairs here and then it opens up, and I actually much prefer this shop compared to the one that was outside. And just there at the entrance, you can see they've got some stuff on the wall there as well. And then you go down these stairs listening to the Zelda music as you're going down into the dungeon. I just think it's a really cool layout. And as you can see this one's a lot more spacious. So definitely go and check this one out instead of the first one if you get the chance to go and visit both of them. This one also just has a better selection in general. And because the games are all on these hooks like this it's just easy to flick through them all. I just noticed Soul Blazer and Terra Enigma there. And other two games from Quintet which are really really good. If you've never played either of them, highly recommend it. And then on that wall there, there were some Famicom games. They've pretty much got everything you could want here. And there's a Super Famicom playing Mario World there as well. And some more SNES games there. There's the weird curry version of Puyo Puyo. I haven't actually got that, maybe I should get it, just because it's kind of interesting. And what else do we have here? There's some Sega Saturns on the wall there. And some boxed Super Famicom games. And yeah, the good thing about this store as well, like that sign just said, they actually include the tax in the price. So you don't get a shock when you go up to the counter. And that's actually something that I haven't mentioned yet, but do check before you go into the shops whether you can get tax free or not. Because as long as you've spent over, I think it's over 5,000 yen and you've got your passport with you, you can actually get 10% tax back on some of your purchases. So it's definitely worth checking whether they do that because you can get some really good deals that way. There were some really interesting things in that cabinet there, and here's some PSP games, 
Unfortunately, because most of the spines are in Japanese, I can't really tell you what the games are. And there was some weird Game Boy bath towel that I saw down there as well, so that's kind of interesting. And then on this wall here, we've got some PS1 games and some PC Engine games down there. Uh, I think I saw a Fantasy Zone there, really great Sega arcade game. And then at the top there, I just spotted that. There was a really interesting Last Story Special Edition on the Wii. I didn't even know it had a special edition in Japan, so that's really cool. I kind of wish I'd had a, a closer look at that, actually, because Last Story is a really, really good game. And then here we've got a few accessories. I saw the multi-tap there for the PC Engine and a few controllers. The Saturn 3D controller, that's always a really cool one to see. And then a nice cabinet full of systems there. There's a boxed Virtual Boy and Neo Geo. And then there's some more systems down here as well and some GameCube controllers, some Dreamcast games and some more N64 games there and again with the end labels on the side as well. So that was a really cool shop, I'm sure you'll agree. Now if you come down the street here and find a place called Star Kebab, I don't know why I find that name so funny. If you turn right at Star Kebab and come down here, this is my second favourite shop out of the lot. This one is called Beep. And I'm just going to let you guys listen to the entrance to this shop because I just love the atmosphere that it gives off. So I'm sure you'll agree that it's so exciting going down these stairs and just hearing that music get louder and louder. And Beep is just an incredible shop all around. They've also got a Twitter page which I'll put a link to in the description. But basically this shop is well known for its amazing selection of Japanese computers. As you can see up there on the shelf just then was an X68000. And I was really tempted to pick one up but they're a bit too expensive for me at the moment. There's also a few MSX computers there as well. So if you're into your retro computers, especially Japanese ones, this is definitely the place to come. It's just incredible, the amount of stuff they've got in here. Once again though, it's quite a small shop, so don't come in here if you're wearing a backpack. I did make that mistake, and I actually had to leave and come back without it, just because there wasn't enough room to turn around. But there's so much cool stuff in here, you could easily spend all day looking at all the stuff on these shelves. I don't know if you noticed there in that cabinet, there was actually a Dreamcast... Um, there was actually a Dreamcast dev unit, which is really cool to see. And there's a whole shelf here full of Mega Drive games. So if you're after Mega Drive games, this is a great place to have a look as well. And there once again are some of the Columbus Circle releases, and a whole wall of Super Famicom games as well. Although most of this shop is to do with uh, retro computers, they do have a good selection of console games too, as you can see here. And they even have a few arcade boards that you can see at the back there. And then down there in these boxes are some loose Famicom and Super Famicom games. I picked that one up there called XXs. If you haven't seen my Famicom pickups episode, I uploaded that one a few weeks ago. There's another one that I picked up that is Goemon. I was looking for the third one, but I didn't manage to find that, but I managed to pick up the original. There's a few more games here. YY World. I think that's that. what that was anyway. I'm not sure actually, but YY World is definitely a great game if you've got a Famicom. Highly recommend checking that one out. And here's a look at some of the PCBs, or at least I think they are. And there's some maybe Sharp 68000 games. I'm not too hot on my Japanese computers. I think there's some MSX games there as well. Yeah, it's not really an area that I've really looked into that much. There was Gradius, and can't see the price on that. But I guess they were quite expensive. I know that the systems are really expensive anyway, but if you are after games for the PCs, this is definitely a great place to look. I was picking out just a few here that I recognise. There's Gradius 2. And again, I don't think I noticed a price on it. But let me know if you saw it down in the comments. Oh, the price is on the side there. I didn't quite make it out though. This video is in 4K though, so if you make it full screen, I've tried to make it so that you'll be able to make out the price labels. And another really cool thing about this shop, they had a load of books and magazines. And apparently they actually sell some fan magazines as well, which is really cool. I wish there was more shops in the UK that sold fanzines as well. And now down here on this side, we've got some Neo Geo games. Again, Neo Geo is not really a system that I know that much about. 
but maybe it's something I'll look into collecting in the future when I've got a bit more disposable income because Neo Geo is insanely expensive to collect for. And then along the top there you can see there's some PC Engine games. Not a huge selection, but pretty good. There was packed land there. Not sure what that one is. 2,600 yen, that's about 20 quid. Or about $20 as well, I think, at the minute. So let me know if you spotted any interesting games up here on the PC Engine. Saw Zero Wing there, of course. That one is well known on the Mega Drive for its terrible translation. I don't know whether the PC Engine version has that as well. And there's Hellfire as well, which is another really famous shoot 'em up for the Mega Drive. I didn't even know before I saw him up there that they actually had ports on the PC Engine, so that was kind of cool. I'm always really excited when I find a game that I didn't even know existed. And we've also got... I think that's Cho Anarchy, which is a really weird game. Kind of like Parodius, but with muscly men for some reason, which is really weird. I uh, can't quite make out what I've just picked up there. Oh, that was Hellfire as well. Yeah, I was kind of interested. I was half tempted to get that, but un unfortunately in the end I didn't. Although I kind of wish I did now, because Hellfire is a great game. Even though I think it's maybe a little bit slow, a little bit on the slow side. And as you can see here, there's some NES games. I think this was kind of like a little import section as well. They had some Game Boy stuff, some Master System games, and some PSP games there. I'm not really sure who would want to come and buy um, European or American games in Japan, but there's the option if you are interested in getting them. And then here's some Game & Watches. I was actually on the lookout for Game & Watches, for games you loved, but unfortunately there wasn't really anything that cheap that you can't really get on eBay or anything. But it's always cool to see them in the shelves like that. And then we've also got a Twin Famicom there. I did get a Twin Famicom in the end, but I actually picked it up from Super Potato instead. And then there's some games here on these hooks. There's some loose hue cards there and some Game Boy games. And random controllers and things like that as well. It's always really fun to just flick through the games that are on those hooks and just see what you can find. You're pretty much guaranteed to find something interesting. And the loose games are generally pretty cheap as well, so you can take a gamble just on whether you like the cover art or not. And I don't know if YouTube will allow that. I just saw some hentai magazines there. Hopefully I won't get this video taken down. And then this was really interesting actually. On this shelf here they had a whole load of homebrew games. And I've actually seen on Twitter recently that because of the coronavirus, a lot of the events where the homebrew devs sell their games is being cancelled. So Beep are actually asking people who have homebrew games if they can actually stock them in the shop. Which I think is really, really cool. And I kind of wish I'd picked more of these up because there was loads up here as you can see. For all different systems, there was one there for the PC Engine, there's some for the Dreamcast, uh, some for the MSX. Pretty much all sorts of different stuff that you can get here, some for the PC there as well. I didn't really know what many of them were because I'm not really that big into the homebrew community, especially the Japanese one. But it is really interesting and I just love the fact that people are still making games for these old systems. And I think there's some more homebrew stuff here. Beep has a really good community feel to it, I think. It's one of the shops that you can really tell that they care a lot about what they've actually got in stock. And you can kind of get that vibe as well from their Twitter page if you follow it. And there was a PC Engine GT there as well, which is always really cool to see. Or LT, whatever the tabletop version is, I can't quite remember. But yeah, this was Beep. I really hope you enjoyed having a look around there. And now the next shop we're going to look at is Surigaya Retro Game. And if you thought the first Surigaya was good, then this one will blow your mind. This one is completely dedicated to retro games, unlike the other ones. And it's right outside Beep, so if you go in, then you get to visit two of the best game shops in the whole of Akihabara in one place. And as you can see, this one is just jam-packed full of stuff. I mean, there's just so much in here. It's another shop that you could easily spend a few hours looking around in, if you knew what you were looking for. As you can see, there is a Famicom disk system in the box. That's something really cool to see. And if I didn't go the twin Famicom route, I would have picked that up. They also had a load of GBA games here. I can see Sonic Advance 1 and 2, two of my favourite games on the system. I don't know if there's any difference between the Japanese and the English releases for that. And there, I just walked past a whole wall of original DS games. And there's some Super Famicom games there on the hooks. 
but the bit I was more interested in was the PC Engine games, which are down there on the left. There was so many games here. I mean, I did spend a few hours once I put the camera down just flicking through everything on the shelves. And there's some Game Gear games as well. Like I said earlier, Game Gear is a system that I'm really considering uh, collecting a bit more for in the future. But let me know if there's any Japanese Game Gear games that I should keep an eye out for. Because I don't really know too much about them. And here's a few of the loose hue cards here. Like I said, they're all really cheap. Like you can see that that one's only 440 yen, which is about £4, something like that. So you really can't go wrong. It's worth just taking a gamble on some and seeing whether they're any good or not. Of course, they're not all super cheap. I picked up Air Zonk that was loose, and that one was about 2000 I think. But it's still a lot better than buying it in the box, especially if you don't care that much about the packaging. And there's one of the Heberake games that I needed for the Super Famicom. I did actually pick that one up, as you can see there. And then down here we've got PS3 and PS2 games. But there was someone down there and I was a bit scared of having the camera in case I got told off. So I went back down this side bit here, hoping that the guy behind the counter wouldn't notice me filming. So. I'm never really sure whether you're allowed to film or not in these shops, but it's kind of awkward to ask in Japanese, especially if I want to try and explain that I've got a YouTube channel. There were some of the Kainad games there on the PSP. I love the fact that Kainad has been re-released so many times. It's great that so many people have been able to experience it, because it really is one of my favourite games ever. And then you can see here loads of Mega Drive games. So although I said earlier that the Mega Drive is kind of uncommon in Japan, you can definitely find a lot of games for it if you know where to look. So Surugai is definitely one of the places that you should come and check out if you're looking for Mega Drive games. I also noticed Sonic 3 there, and Sword of Vermilion. One of the earlier games in Yuzo Koshiro's musical credits, so that's really cool to see. And up the top there, just having a quick look, there's some boxed systems. I saw a Neo Geo there, there's a Mega CD, a 32X even. So if you're after some boxed systems, definitely have a look up there on the top of that shelf. And then there's a few Xbox 360 games. There are actually a surprising number of Xbox 360 games that only came out in Japan. Considering that the console wasn't very successful, it's kind of interesting to see that there was a lot of shoot 'em ups released for it that never got released outside. And the good thing about that is a lot of them are region free as far as I know as well. I think it's down to the individual games rather than the system, so... It's just something to bear in mind if you see any 360 games that you're interested in in Japan, the chances are that they might actually work without having to get a Japanese system, so that's really cool. And then here on this shelf we have some uh, Wonder Swan games down there, I think, and some GameCube games at the top. Yeah, I think they're Wonder Swan games. Of course, the Wonder Swan is probably best known for its excellent Final Fantasy ports in Japan. Unfortunately, the system itself never came out outside of Japan, so it's kind of difficult to play a lot of the RPGs on it unless you already know Japanese. But there's still plenty of other games that are worth playing, like Gunpei. I saw that one down there as well. That's a really cool puzzle game. And of course, Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of the Game Boy, actually designed the Wonder Swan as well. So it's a really interesting system from that point of view, and I would love to do a video on it in the future. And then here's a look at some of the Game Boy and Game Boy Color and I think Famicom games. Yeah, Famicom games as well. There's Famicom Wars there, that's one that I picked up. Of course, the first game in the very long running Advance Wars series that I wish they would make more games in because that hasn't seen a release since the original DS, unfortunately. And I don't know why they keep re-releasing Fire Emblem games and not Advance Wars games because I know a lot of people love Fire Emblem, but I'm actually a huge fan of the Advance Wars series as well, and I would love to see a new game in that series, I really would. So I think we're coming to the end of my look around Surigaya now, I really hope you enjoyed that. It's definitely one of my favourite shops in the whole of Akihabara, and it can be kind of difficult to get to, so hopefully this video has helped you out a little bit in that regard as well. But yeah, really, really recommend checking this shop out. And if you're into DS, there's an insane amount of DS games to look at here as well. Now the next shop we're going to be taking a look at is called Mac Japan. I did go in there, but unfortunately I didn't manage to film anything. Because I'd saw a video from one of my favourite YouTubers, Kid Shuryuken, and he actually got kicked out for filming. So I wasn't really brave enough to do that, but I'll play a little bit of his video, and you can hear why I didn't decide to do the same thing. 
edition, lots of stuff to build your own arcade sticks or just buy some or build your own um, in the case of buttons and sticks. Uh, but we're coming to the, the end of this video because I'm getting busted right now. So stay tuned, everybody, for my final word. And sticking with Kid Shoryuken, this next shop was one of the ones that I found on his channel, but unfortunately I didn't manage to find this one. I'm not sure if it's moved locations or not, this one is called Tor no Anna 2. And I couldn't find it, like I said, the only one I could find was one near the train station and it didn't have retro games in. So I'll use a little bit of his footage and I'll put links to both of the videos down in the description below. And the next shop is another one that I couldn't actually find the entrance to, this one's called G Front. And from what I could find online, apparently now they're only letting people in if you actually ring the door and tell them that you want to come in, which I thought was a bit off-putting. But I managed to find this video of the shop from a few years ago. I don't know whether it's the same now as it was back then or not. It looks like a really cool place though if you're into arcade games. Although I've heard online from a few forums that they're a bit dodgy with their prices, so not too sure about that one. The next shop is right at the end of the street. So if you go across this zebra crossing here and turn left at the end, you'll find a shop called Friends. Although from outside you wouldn't know that there's a game shop at all, it's actually on the second floor of this building. So you can see straight away this is another amazing retro game shop. There's a lot of Famicom and Super Famicom games in here if I remember right. There's also a load of loose hue cards there on those hooks which I mentioned earlier which are always really fun to look at. Really good prices in here as well, from what I remember. And there's some DS games on that side and some PC Engine games at the bottom there. I was actually sat on the floor flicking... I was actually sat on the floor flicking through all the PC Engine games when I came here without the camera. And I managed to find some really good stuff as well. And then on the other side of the room here you can see this is their wall of Famicom games. The last time I came a few years ago there was actually quite a lot more than this. So I don't know if they've either scaled back a little bit or if some of the stock sold. You can see some of the shelves have kind of emptied out a bit. So hopefully they're still getting new stock in because it's a great shop. But I guess because more people are doing videos about it and more people are hearing about the shop that more people are going there. So that's both good and bad. Good because more people are finding out about a great game shop. But bad because a lot of the more sought after games are probably being brought up and probably not being replaced as much as I would have liked. And here's a look at the Super Famicom section on the other side of the room here. This footage is actually from the last time I was here so it might be a little bit different these days, but it still gives you a good idea of what to expect from the shop as a whole. The most interesting things in this shop though were definitely the ones that were in the counter, and although I didn't manage to get video of what games were in the counter this time, last time I did sneakily manage to get a little bit of footage from it. So. Have a look at what you can see in here, there was some really rare and interesting stuff. In fact I actually picked up Umihara Kawase on the Super Famicom last time I was here, from inside this counter. And another cool thing about this shop that not a lot of people know about, if you go up to the second floor they actually sell a lot of soundtracks and some more modern games as well. So don't just go on the first floor, definitely go up the stairs and have a look on the floor above as well. So there's one last game shop that I wanted to show you guys, and although this one isn't technically in Akihabara, it's a bit further up the road, it's a really good shop, and I actually found this one while I was walking up to Ueno just to go for a walk, so I was really surprised to find a book off over there, it's a book off plus, but as you can see they had a pretty good selection of DS, 3DS, Famicom, N64 and PlayStation 1 games. But nothing too exciting, and that brings us to the end of my Akihabara video. I really hope you've enjoyed it, hopefully you're still here, because I'm going to end the tour now by showing you guys by far my favourite arcade that I found in the whole of Japan. It really is amazing, it's called Taito Hirose Hei Arcade, and it's just full of original shoot 'em ups and fighting games and platformers, and basically every single game that I love I managed to find in this arcade. I'm not going to talk over it, so from me, this is the end of the video. Let me know if you actually watched all the way to the end. I'll be amazed if you did, because this is over an hour long now. But enjoy this arcade, because I just think it's amazing. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week for the next episode. Thank you.
So thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video of Akihabara. I'll see you again next week for the next episode. Goodbye.